Look, I think, unfortunately, Vladimir Putin is doing what he does best, and he's taking over a weakened American national security apparatus that it's headed by President Joe Biden. You know, these sorts of conversations and statements didn't happen under President Trump, but what's happening now is President Putin is taking minimal expenditure on his account, maximizing his propaganda machine in the international media campaign, and saying he's going to invade the Ukraine and things like that, which he will, of course, never do. But he's using the propaganda like he did during the Russiagate investigation to minimal expense on his side uh, to maximize everything Russia, 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 and make sure the focus is on him. And the United States is in a weakened position, and he knows that, so there's nothing to countermand that force. You know, I, I would agree with you, but, you know, care and feeding and deploying 100,000 troops is kind of expensive. Ambassadors from the United States and Russia faced off yesterday over the Ukraine-Russia crisis, Russia accusing the United States of whipping up hysterics, while 100,000 Russian troops, as I mentioned, gathering there on Ukraine's border. Both Ukraine and Russia say that, that Biden and his regime is ginning up fear. But again, Putin does have those 100,000 troops on that border. Help the folks at home sort through this. What do you think is really going on here? Sure, like, and that's a great point that you brought up. Look, the, the premier of the Ukraine doesn't, he's publicly said he doesn't think Russia is going to invade. The defense minister in the Ukraine has publicly said he doesn't think Russia is going to invade. And so that's a pretty pr powerful statements from them. And I said 100,000 troops on the border. Yes, it's a lot. Yes, it's a big expenditure. If you're the United States of America and your tax dollars pay for all sorts of government expenditures. But when you're Vladimir Putin and you own basically every oil company in Russia, you've privatized every public industry to your benefit, and you've told the Russian Federation that you're going to be president for life, that's not a lot of money to him. And the Russian people sent, tend to side with him because it shows him flexing over America. So for him to move 100,000 troops just isn't a big deal. Um, he'll, he'll, he can do that readily. It is suggested that that Joe Biden and his and his apparatchiks in his administration are ginning up this fervor over Russia invading Ukraine to change the subject because nothing is going right internationally or domestically for uh, the Democrats and how they've administered this government. It, is there anything to that, do you think? Well, whether they're doing it intentionally or unintentionally, they're doing it. They're doing it because, like you said, they have nothing else to talk about. What are they going to talk about? $5 gasoline prices, a terrible border situation, Chinese fentanyl killing our youth, um, no, no power against Russia, Iran, or China, Xi Jinping in the South China mm. Sea. I mean, I think they're using it, the media campaign is using it to their advantage to say, let's talk about the possibility of World War III, which is a terrifying concept. Is this president actually going to lead us into a war? when he said he was going to be the peacemaker. So I think they are using Russia's propaganda machine, again, Putin wins on that, uh, to talk about how powerful Russia is and how much we have to take this threat seriously. And these conversations just didn't happen again under our Trump administration, they wouldn't. Phone call between Biden and the Ukrainian President Zelensky uh, last week did not go very well due to these disagreements that the two had on the impending threat level. Now, unlike President Trump, Joe Biden refuses to release the transcript of his call with Ukraine's president. Now, remember, the Democrats, they impeached President Trump even after the transcript exonerated him. Do you think the Republicans should impeach Biden over the contents of this call that he is clearly hiding? I mean, I, you know, look, I was at the White House when, when that first phone call happened, and I've done a lot of national security work for the president, so I'd like to see the phone call first. But the fact that they won't release it, if the call was so great and so clean and nothing wrong, why wouldn't they release it? And the double standard that they're issuing at the White House, the American people clearly see it, and they're tired of that hypocrisy. They're tired of saying, when the Democrats are in power, we have rules for us that don't apply to you, and when the Republicans are in power, we'll switch up the game table entirely so we still be, we are still benefited. So I think it's just another extension of why is it not happening. But hopefully when Republicans take power in Congress in November, they get that call sheet and maybe they will impeach him. Well, you know, that, that, is, that is very astute of you to point out this double standard we're being asked to accept by both the Republican Party, the Democrat Party, and the media establishment in this country. Uh, Biden met with non-NATO ally Qatar to discuss strengthening its alliance as a potential energy ally if Russia does invade and cuts off the gas supply to Europe. I think it's fair to point out at this point, can't we, Kosh, that, that Biden took American energy offline 
Now our allies, they're forced to turn elsewhere for their energy security. Biden's decision didn't just hurt American producers, because I think harming America was Biden's number one goal, but it also hurt our allies who have no place to, to rely on to, to get energy with no strings attached. Am I wrong there? No, that's a brilliant point. Look, the second this administration came into power, they stopped, we and under Trump stopped Nord Stream 2. Why is that important? Because it gave Russia global energy domination to Europe and Germany specifically. He stopped that. When Biden came into office, he let that thing go. When he came into office, he shut off the Keystone Pipeline and other pipelines. And people are seeing the cost, really costly results of that. Just look at the gas prices. And now the fact that we were, as you pointed out, energy independent under Trump, and now we are looking to foreign allies to bolster our energy reserves and tamp down the price of gas and oil around the world, just shows the decisions this administration has made in a year and how costly they are at the pump and beyond. Gosh, Patel, always appreciate the conversation, sir. Come back soon.